Hello, everyone. Welcome to Big League Dreaming, the podcast, the show about baseball, dreams, and family. I'm John Gonzalez, the dad. And if you're new to this show or you've listened to it before, it is a dad and his three sons catching up on the game of baseball. And I'll tell you what, it's a busy day because today we're talking about the 2024 College World Series. Eight teams are left out of 64, and uh, I can't believe this is all going down. And we've been having a little fun with uh, it's a little different different way of predicting our winners. We're going to introduce first each son, and then we'll talk about our format of the 2024 College World Series. Let's start with son number one. His name is Zach Gonzalez. He's based in Charlotte, North Carolina, a Seattle Mariners fan. Zach, how you doing? I'm doing great. Excited to watch the College World Series this weekend. Uh, it kicks off this weekend, so very excited for all those teams that made it, they're going to be just super pumped up in the dugout this whole entire week in Omaha. So looking forward to seeing some World Series baseball. Our number two is Ty Gonzalez. He's based in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and uh, he's also a big college baseball fan. Ty, how you doing? I'm doing awesome. I'm glad we could uh, chat College World Series again this week before it all starts. Well, it's actually going on right now as we're dropping this episode, as we're recording, right? So Excited to be on the episode today. Yeah, you're the Mets fan, and the Mets are strangely still in contention, so we'll talk about the Mets some other time, right? Yeah. Uh, Son number three is based in South Bend, Indiana. He's still in baseball as a pitching coach and um, associate head coach, I should say, also doing recruiting for IUSB there in South Bend. And you're at a ball game, strangely enough, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's summer ball is in full swing, so we got tournaments at our field and dealing with rain and all the crazy schedule changes, but you know, I'm excited for the college world series. I mean, by the time this episode drops, uh, you know, we'll already have a couple games done and you know, I'll, I'll already have a win on the board. <laughs> I like that attitude. Well, the world series does begin uh, today, June 14th. Uh, this is a best of three championship series. Uh, we'll kick the, the best of three championship series. will kick off on June 22nd. All the games at that time will be played at Charles Schwab Field in Omaha, Nebraska. We've been following the College World Series in a different format, but uh, we'll talk about the odds of who's favorite to win in a second. But, Ty, why don't you run down for everyone um, what's going – well, let's, let's run down. First, we'll run down the brackets. So there are two brackets going on in this round right now. Um, we'll also tell you the combined regional and super regional – records here in bracket number one you've got number one tennessee on number four north carolina number eight florida (laughs) state and number 12 virginia and in bracket number two we have kentucky number two is other the number two team in that bracket or overall i should say uh texas a&m nc state and florida uh texas a&m at three and um, and nc state number 10 so uh ty why don't you run down what we did, how we selected our, our teams for this uh, playoffs. Yeah, so last week we uh, we put all the teams that were in the Super Regionals into a randomized wheel, and then we uh, did like a draft, but it was more of like an auto-pick draft of uh, what teams we got to root for. So on my team, I had one advance, which was Florida. My Florida Gators made it. Uh, both Oregon and Oregon State, for me, got knocked out. Um, yeah, it was, it was fun. Go check out the last last week's episode that we did, um, where we randomly selected our teams. I think uh, Zane, did you have the best results? I don't, I don't think so. I think Dad might have. Really, oh, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah, Dad got three teams in, uh, and then me and Zane got two each. Then I had the one. It's rough. Yeah. So let's let's I, run I down our draw. teams. Zach, why don't you run down who's who's whose teams are still in it? Okay, so yep, Ty said his uh, Florida Gators is his lone representative in Omaha. Um, Zane has two teams that he was assigned that moved on to Omaha, and that is the Tennessee Volunteers, the Dog Pick, and then um, Florida State. The two teams that I landed on that advanced are Coach Brock Dowd's Kentucky Wildcats and the NC State Wolfpack. And then dad got three teams in. So he's sitting <clears throat> sitting pretty in the best position amongst the four of us. And his three teams that advanced are Texas A&M, uh, North Carolina, 
the Tar Heels, and then the Virginia Cavaliers. Yeah, I forgot we did a dog a dog pick. I forgot about that. <laughs> That's right. The podcast dog pick was Tennessee. We did one final spin at the end of the episode. <laughs> so we have uh, Zach has a dog named Griffey, and uh, Zane has a dog named Benny. Uh, and uh, we, we, we selected a team for them, and they are Tennessee. And it turns out, folks, that Tennessee, uh, in, in all the things I'm looking at, is the favorite to win this year. Are you seeing the same thing too, Zach? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've seen that too. I mean, their offense is, is pretty dynamic. Um, but I'm a little concerned for Tennessee because playing in Omaha at that Charles Schwab Field is a very big park. It's a pitcher's park, and they've kind of they kind of rely on hitting three, four home runs per game. So um, when they when they step into that environment in Omaha, I I wonder how how they'll do in that big park. And uh, good observation there. I would imagine, right, Zane, that uh, at at this point, you know, great great pitching is going to win out. You you. You could, although some of these games have been a slugfest. I mean, whatever, 18, 27 runs, right? Yeah, it's going to be a pitcher's duel quite a bit. I mean, you, you kind of hope your pitching carries you, but in tournament play you see a lot more small ball come into play. So I think it mainly just comes down to who can keep their composure and make plays on defense more consistently and, and not let let the game unravel. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point because, you know, it's it's making the routine play and making the occasional fabulous play right to keep uh, a one run inning to, from going into two three or four you know as they say the cliche putting up a crooked number I hate that one um, but uh, it's just you know letting the, getting that getting that lead runner getting the outs making the hitting the cutoff man it comes down to execution at this point the team that executes the best typically does well you probably see this right now and. In the games that you're watching, even summer ball, right, Zane? Yeah, like you can tell once once they get to, you know, they're pushing time limit or you're in bracket play. You see, okay, we get the leadoff guy on. Let's pull him over. Let's try and get that one run. You know, you start to see teams start to play for one run a little bit more. They're a little more eager to play for one run as opposed to, hey, you know, like let's just let this play out. You know, hopefully we can play for a big inning. You know, because pitching is going to usually dominate, especially like how Zach said uh Charles Schwab Stadium. It's it's a big park. I think they brought the fences in a little bit, uh, maybe last year to try and get a little more offense. But it's still a big yard, so it's, it's it'll be interesting. Uh, let me run down the other other favorites. The odds uh, put out by the sport books. Not that I do this stuff anyway, uh, but I looked them up. Uh, Tennessee is is the top favorite, followed by Texas A and M, uh, Kentucky number three. North Carolina four, Florida State five, uh, Virginia six, North Carolina State seven, and the Florida Gators tie your team. They're eight. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I agree with what Zach was saying earlier. I don't know how Tennessee will do, even though they are the big favorite, um, just because not only the mention of the field, but I feel like with these College World Series, there's always the big uh, – the big underdog team, the big upset team um, to look out for, like, you know, the classic Stony Brook we saw years ago. Um, Zach, who's like a – who could be like a big upset pick, do you think, in your opinion, like a big underdog pick that might go far that some people might not think about? Yeah, I actually think the underdog out of this field of A this year is Kentucky. Even though they have that number two ranking – um, Kentucky has never been to Omaha before in their school's history. And they're a very gritty team and they kind of grind stuff out. Like they they play in that SEC and they had a good year, but they never had anything handed to them. They weren't blowing out teams. They're not a very flashy team. They don't have like these guys out there hitting a bunch of home runs or doing things showing off. They're like doing the little stuff. Um, a very gritty team, very very underdog team. So even though, you know, Florida is the number eight odds team to win the college world series, I think a lot of people that are like, you know, that, that cover these teams, um, you know, people that are big time college baseball fans, they're kind of, if they don't have a dog in the fight, they're kind of rooting for Kentucky because you would love to see a team do well in Omaha for the very first time. You know, the contrast that, Zach, you said Kentucky is making their first ever College World Series. 
you have a team like Florida State that is going for the 24th time, third most overall. So uh, you've got uh, a big disparity there in the experience. Will, will some of that hurt Kentucky, do you think, going into this into this round? Uh, it could. It really just depends on how how the players react to that environment. Some of them might just be like, wow, you know, this is a big stage and they don't handle it very well. But then they could also go into it thinking, you know, we've been setting records and doing things for the first time all season long as a program. So this is just another thing that we're doing for the first time. We're kind of used to it. Let's just keep it rolling. So I'm really interested to see how the Wildcats would do on that stage. Um, and yeah, I was excited to, to land on them because I do want to see them do well for sure. Uh, any other teams that might surprise people? Um, I guess I'll go back to my other team, NC State, uh, because I want to see them do well because of what happened in 2021. I felt really bad for them when they made it to Omaha in 2021, their last appearance. And during during Omaha was, you know, primetime COVID protocols, right? And all these guys were getting tested all all week long and things like that. I think there were two games into Omaha. I think they were one and one. And then they had a bunch of guys test positive and they were eliminated. They had to forfeit the rest of their games and, you know, do lose by no contest to Vanderbilt. And they couldn't finish out Omaha. I think they played the first two games with only 13 players because they had so many guys that were inactive. Um, and that left a, a big sour taste in a lot of people around here in North Carolina that are NC State fans that they, they didn't even get a fair opportunity after earning their way a spot to Omaha. So I want to see them do well uh, because of that right there. Man, you can probably relate to all that, right? Do you remember that 2021 season pretty well? Oh, yeah. I mean, 20, 2020 and 2021 were just wild years in general, like, yeah, COVID tests all over the place, people not being able to play games because of, you know, positive tests. Like, that, that whole year is just, you know, tough. And like Zach's saying, like NC State, like, you know, last time they were here, they feel like, you know, they got kind of the short end of the stick. And so, you know, hopefully they can kind of come out and, and prove, like, hey, when we were here last time, like, we belong. We belong here again. So, you know, I'm interested to see how teams like Tennessee fare with them being the favorite. I think like Zach was saying about Kentucky, I think I don't think they'll be too overwhelmed with the environment with it being their first time. You know, playing in the SEC, you're basically playing in a World Series environment consistently week after week. And you know, when you have to go play at Tennessee, you have to go play at Ole Miss, you have to go play at these schools that have rich traditions of baseball. You know, it, it means a lot at the college level at, at those schools. So you know, I don't think Kentucky will really get overwhelmed that much. But then again, they could, because like, like you said, that's their first time. It could, you know, it could speed up on them pretty quick. Uh, but we don't, we'll, we'll see. It's excited. It's, it's, it's exciting to see Florida State back in it. You know, Link, Link Jarrett, the head coach down there, took over, what, was it the last year maybe? You know? Yeah. So coming from Notre Dame where he led them to – to the World Series and, you know, goes down to Florida State to essentially get them back to this point, you know, but they're also another team similar to Tennessee that relies on a high-powered offense and, you know, putting up a bunch of runs. So it's going to be interesting to see how Tennessee and Florida State do, my two teams. Um, hope, kind of leaning more towards hopefully Tennessee does well, mainly for the dogs. <laughs> well, I want to I wanna see uh, Virginia surprise some people. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But let's run down, uh, Ty, the, the games this weekend. So um, today uh, on June 14th, it's a 2 o'clock, 7 o'clock. North Carolina is taking on Virginia. Tennessee takes, takes on Florida State. And then on Saturday the 15th, uh, it's again the 2 and 7 o'clock. All these games are on ESPN. You got Kentucky versus NC State, Texas A&M versus Florida on the nightcap. And then on Sunday, the format is loser game one versus loser game two, and then winner game one versus winner of game two in the nightcap. So um, you're going to be able to see, I would say, Ty, all, all the teams playing on Friday and Saturday, and then Sunday kind of seeing how it's all going to shake out, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's always it's always fun um, that third day seeing where everyone kind of ends up at. And it's always – I feel like to me it's always kind of shocking – where the teams line up at. I feel like it's 
for the most part, sometimes it's, yeah, kind of expected, but I, I like it when it's like, wow, this team's in the loser, like two teams you don't expect, which I can see happening this year. Yeah, I mean, the best case scenario is you're like two wins, right? You get two wins this weekend, your, fr- yeah. your uh, Friday or your Saturday game, and then your Sunday game. If you can come out of it with, with two wins, you feel pretty good go, going into next week. Yeah, I mean, the, the flip side of that is, you know, and I've, I've always heard, like, talking to coaches that have made it to World Series, and, you know, the, the flip side of it is, you know, how long you got to kind of wait around with them only playing two games a day. You know, you, you play Friday, you're off Saturday, and then if you play that night game, you're, you're waiting around a lot to go play your one game. So, you know, that's kind of a factor that people don't really take into account. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, waiting around. Oh, you get to see see the other teams play too and, and do all the speculating. That's what we love to do, right, as baseball players and coaches <laughs> sit around and go like, well, if this happens this way, if they use this pitcher, that means they're not, you know what I mean? All those scenarios play out, but – uh, we'll get to watch a lot of exciting baseball. All right, uh, let's wrap this thing up. Uh, any uh, any more thoughts, Zane, about what you're looking forward to this weekend? Oh, I mean, it's just – it's Omaha. I mean, it's the best time of the year. I mean, I think it's just exciting to see the World Series. And, you know, I've always said on this podcast, if you can go, go. Like, I think I'm the only one out of us four that has gone to Omaha um, and seen it firsthand. And, I mean, it's just a great atmosphere. And if anyone can – get the chance to go down there and experience it it's an awesome experience yeah, maybe i'll just uh, road trip it anyway uh t- ty any uh any last words yeah i'm gonna make my uh my final prediction here to close out our college world series uh episodes we've been doing i'm gonna close it out with a prediction and i'm going to call florida state as our winner this year oh all right yeah. wow. florida state uh yep. i like that bold move not, not a bad one though uh zach you want to Kind of give your final thoughts here going into the weekend. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing some some top prospects kind of emerge. You know, Walt Schmidt from Kentucky, Caglione from Florida. See what these kind of first rounders will do on this stage. Looking forward to that. I uh, also think it's pretty crazy that there's four ACC teams and four SEC teams. Uh, very, very strange. Um, not super surprising, but I mean, like all of the different teams that were in that super regional, like. Tie your teams out in Oregon, Evansville, schools from other conferences for it to be eight teams from the Southeast area. Uh, pretty crazy. Um, I listened to a Baseball America College World Series preview, Dad, and they were talking about this is the first time it's ever been ACC, SEC sent in the World Series ever since they switched to this uh, eight team format. Um, apparently before it was just a three game series against two teams. That was the college world series and dad, I'll put you, I'll put you on the spot here. They said it was played in Kalamazoo, Michigan. That's right. When was uh, that going down? Uh, the I college world well. series was played in Kalamazoo, Michigan. How did I forget this or not know this? I think did Michigan play in that or win it or at that time they they had it back at western michigan and back, i want to say back in the 40s and 50s is when the the world series i think started out and that was that was the site was Kalamazoo, michigan on western michigan's campus they, they got it plastered everywhere i i didn't know that they said that was the site in Kalamazoo, michigan i i guess because it's midwest it's not as hot in in june uh, that's pretty crazy i'm gonna have to go look for some of that stuff yeah. Well, I mean, you got you also got you also got to factor in back in the day. I imagine, you know, college baseball wasn't as big of a thing yet on the West Coast. So I'm sure a lot of those colleges that had programs for a long time were on the the East and Midwest. Good point. Yeah. Good point. All right. Uh, do, does, uh, so Ty said Florida State. Um, I'm gonna. I, I think you have to stick with one of your teams, right, uh, Zane? I mean, we got to stick with. You're probably gonna stick with Tennessee. Yeah, I said Tennessee mainly for the dogs, but I hope Kentucky does well just because Coach Dowd being there, you know, he was our hitting coach when I was at Kalamazoo Valley. So it's cool seeing him and seeing him post all his stuff of him with his his new family and being able to experience everything at Omaha. So I think it's really cool. So hopefully they do well, get a couple wins. And, you know, like Zach's saying, they're kind of a sleeper team. So hopefully they can maybe pull it out. It'd be cool. Yeah. And Zach, you're rooting for Kentucky as well? Oh, yeah, totally. I think that would be super awesome. Um, just kind of like how Coastal did it. They show up and just go in the whole thing. 
just show up. Sometimes that's all you have to do is just show up. All right, guys. Well, that was a lot of fun uh, talking College World Series with you. We'll see. Uh, we'll have to recap as we get into the finals because two teams will come out of these brackets, right? And then they'll face off in the championship. Actually, no. I get that wrong. They they have to win two, don't they? Best yeah, two out of three. Yeah. Best of three. Best of three. Yep. Best of three. So uh, game one would be the 22nd. Game two, the 23rd. If necessary, they're playing two games on the 23rd. No, that? that'll be it'll be Monday the twenty fourth. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, if necessary, Monday, June twenty fourth on ESPN. Okay, I'm looking at the wrong list then, but either way, either way, we're in for some fun. Uh, Ty, where can people get more information about Big League Dream the podcast? Yep, you can listen to us wherever you listen to your podcast at Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We're also on YouTube, Big League Dream of the Podcast. Give us a follow on Twitter or X now at BLD pod that's at BLD POD and we're also on TikTok at big league dreaming check out all our fun short short videos and uh, check out all our other episodes too big league dreaming the podcast we'll see you next Saturday at 9 a.m.